Hi, it's Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, September 26th. Okay, so we have the moon in her rulership still in this Cancer energy going void, of course, at 6.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Leo energy at 6.49 p.m. So not a huge window of uncertainty, of instability, of second guessing, of insecurity and doubt. Of course, that's what happens when the moon goes void. And of course, the transition coming out of Cancer energy into Leo energy is always welcomed. Why? Well, because with the moon and her rulership and cancer energy, we're in all the fields. We're in protection mode. We are focused on the past. There's a lot of swirling going on in our inner realm. The Leo energy, though, of course, being a fixed fire sign, the fixed energy is going to help us stabilize from the choppiness, if you will, of our emotions. And of course, we're in Libra season. So our teeter tottering the back and forth of trying to bring the scales between our heart and head into balance is going to be a long term practice. The Leo energy is fire energy. So that's going to dry up a lot of those emotions. It's going to help us kind of feel regenerated, rejuvenated, if you will bring the spark, the fire, the flame back. And it's really pushing us to be a little bit more forthcoming, a little bit more expressive with our thoughts, with our feelings, with a lot of the things that, of course, we've been biting our tongue upon. Let me also just say that we are still in eclipse season. Libra season, of course, is going to have us kind of biting our tongue a little bit longer, a little bit tighter than we would like or would prefer. Because again, we have a lot to say, but we don't really want to say it because we don't want to be the bad guy. Now that fire energy and air energy from Libra season is going to spark off a lot of emotion. It's going to spark off a lot of creativity, especially we're problem solving some of the relationship dynamics are definitely concerned. Again, we're still under the influence of eclipse season. So the cards, the 52 cards in our deck that we threw up in the air at the beginning of eclipse season hasn't fallen to the ground yet. We don't even know what hand we're being dealt. You may have indicators in your present situation and circumstance of the topics and themes that are going to be kind of pushing you to make some major changes. But until we get to this next eclipse event, until we get past that eclipse energy, we're not going to be seeing things clearly. And therefore, we may have a little bit of a creative solution appear to us as of right now. But again, we're not seeing the whole scope of the situation, nor do we have all the information, all the details, nor do we have the whole truth. So there's a little bit of patience that we're going to have to have. And of course, many of us were not born with such a thing. None of us have been able to find that particular patience potion online for purchase. So we're just going to have to, again, act as the observer, as some of the situations, the indications, the thoughts, the ideas, the emotions are popping off, act as the observer until we can see things super clear. Now, today... We have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, leaving his rulership in the Virgo energy for Libra energy. Now, there's an astral forecast that I put out for this event. Again, download your Libra season e-guide in order to really capture where the mental plane is shifting, where new thoughts, new ideas are shifting, where information is coming in, because again, we're going to be hella indecisive in this Libra energy, and we are also, again, being asked to see things from a different lens, from a different perspective, from a different set of eyes. So as we kind of, you know, move through the day here, Mercury is going to be at this 29th critical crisis degree of Virgo energy before shifting into that Libra energy. And that means that there's going to be an intensity in our headspace. Again, please listen to the Ascension forecast for this week to understand where these energy shifts are actually manifesting in the physical form so that you know what is going on when it feels like your head is in a vice grip. Okay, so with all that being said, there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves again at the final degrees of his rulership in Virgo energy, 
Mercury is going to be making a trine, which is a beautiful interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who, of course, is retrograde at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of Capricorn energy. A trine means that we are dealing with like elements. This is Earth on Earth action. And any time that we have Pluto energy and Virgo energy working together means that we are going to unearth something in our mental plane. We are going to unearth and bring to a new level of awareness where it is that inner dialogues, inner narratives, perspective, perceptions, something shifting in order to kind of set us free from some of the limiting Limit, well, the limiting thoughts, the limiting emotions, the limiting information and perspectives that we've been sitting in, something else is being revealed. And because Pluto's involved, this is likely going to be missing puzzle pieces. This is going to be, even if it's not so nice information, it's going to be a revelation that you can't unknow. And so there is an intensity in the mental plane. There is also an intensity of trying to get to the truth of the matter. There is also an intensity focusing in on our physical realms, the physical aspects, people, places, and things, identifying, again, what needs to stay, what needs to go. Pluto is trying to clear out the space of the old realm, the old reality. Mercury in Virgo energy focused on the problem so that we can fix it, heal it, repair it. We are focused on the smaller details of the greater, grander picture that we once wanted, that we're no longer resonating with, that now we have to deconstruct, we have to eliminate before actually moving on. That is going to put us in detective mode. Detective mode is super good for us at this particular juncture, especially seeing as, you know, we gather information in Virgo energy, and then we try to integrate, balance that information out in Libra energy. So this is definitely going to be intense just because, again, it's popping off at 29 degrees. And because it's an Earth energy, it has a lot of solution type of energy coming at us on how it is that we're going to break free, how it is that we're going to bring a certain finality completion point in our physical realm. Now, the moon in her rulership and cancer energy is going to be making a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings. Jupiter is in this Gemini energy again, another reason of why we're on the fence, another reason why we're weighing the pros and cons of our options, of our opportunities to move on, to move forward. Again, Jupiter trying to expand the mental plane really push the boundaries of our thoughts, of our ideas, of the information and knowledge that we've already accumulated and how to actually integrate that into our present moment, into our day-to-day -day lives. Emotionally speaking, Jupiter is going to be giving us a lot to think about, a lot of positive things to think about, a lot of growing points, if you will. And because he does bring a certain level of confidence, a certain level of optimism, we're definitely going to be feeding off of the realizations that Mercury and Pluto just kind of brought to our attention. We're going to understand where it is that, again, we kind of have to dig deep. We have to understand that we've already learned some tough love life lessons in our experience, in our journey. And now is the time to use that wisdom, information and knowledge in order for us to grow and in order for us to move on. The moon then going to make a positive interaction with the sun in Libra energy. So anytime that we have the sun and the moon coming together, we know that there's going to be an aha moment. Lucky for us, this is a positive interaction, which means that the aha moment is going to come out of a positive situation and circumstance instead of a conflict, instead of a tension filled one. Now, the moon in her rulership, again, is about kind of preserving what it is that we've done, what it is that we've built, what it is that we've created. But we also realize that we are essentially holding on to dead weight beating a dead horse, so to speak. And of course, the sun now shining a very bright light in this Libra energy is showing us where it is that certain areas of our lives are out of whack and where it is once we identify the unbalanced situation, where it is that we have to kind of do a little bit more to bring those scales back into balance. The moon in Cancer energy going to get into the boxing ring square off with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in Aries energy. Just when we realize, again, feeding off of that aha moment of wants, needs and desires of where it is that we're moving away from certain things, where it is that we want to move closer to other certain things. Just when we have that realization, then we kind of move back into the old version of self. We sit in fear. We sit in doubts. We sit in insecurity. We're second guessing ourselves because whatever 
whatever it is that we just realized that we need to do is putting us in a situation to do some things that we technically don't want to do because we don't want to be the bad guy. So anytime that we are in a square, this is going to illuminate where we're going through some growing pains. And of course, the moon and cancer energy is very attached to the old version of self, the old realm and reality. Chiron, of course, has been helping us build and anchor in this new version of self. But at this particular juncture, we're trying to kind of talk ourselves out of what it is that we realize that we need to be doing now, because again, it requires accountability and responsibility that we're not really feeling so prepared to do, to make, or to kind of take on. Again, we're in Libra season. We don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to poke the bear. We have a lot going on in our inner realm that we are going to go to great lengths to mask, to keep to ourselves. And it does kind of, you know, suggest that in this square where tension and conflict is created, that we are trying to talk ourselves into settling, into being okay with situations that we're just not okay with, because of course, that would free us up to not having to be accountable and responsible for bossing up and doing what is right for us. So there is a little bit of a power struggle there. When we do talk about power struggles, we do have to factor in Pluto because he's helping us to deal with these power struggles. It's just not time yet. Heads up, it will be time here in about maybe two weeks ish. When Pluto finally goes direct, we are going to be able to take action and make moves to boss up to do those hard things to make major changes and major transformations. 409 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mercury will be moving into Libra energy. Again, if you've listened to your September Zodiac forecast and for my Patreon members, you guys can access those particular forecasts at any point in time by just typing it into the search bar at the top of the feed. Um, You're going to want to take a a re-listen, if you will. Mercury moving into Libra energy is the last astro event that we do have taking place here in September. So when you check out your Zodiac forecast, at least you're going to know where this is going to impact your life the most. But of course, I do really want you to be pouring into that Libra season e-guide as well. That's definitely going to be a great reference for us to kind of look back on as we kind of move forward, because this is a very pivotal point in time. Again, we're in eclipse season. We are in Libra season, still not settled from the equinox energy. And now we have Mercury moving into Libra energy, which is hella indecisive, even though we're kind of able to compromise and negotiate, even though we're able to see other people's perspectives, see the other side of the coin, we're not going to be able to take action on anything that we arrive at because of the indecision of Libra energy. 12.29 p.m., we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the Scorpio energy doing the deep dive into the depths of her passions, of her desires, and equally a deep dive into the darkest parts of her fears, her doubts, her insecurities. Venus will be making a positive interaction with Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is going to be a creative spark, if you will. This is going to be, again, because Scorpio energy has the detective hat on, Venus, of course, being the detective of her happiness, of her joy, of her safety, of her security. Neptune being retrograde and Pisces energy has us dealing with life as it is, not for the way that we wished it would be. Those rose colored glasses got bitch slapped off of our face many months ago. We're still sitting in it. And so the truth of the matter is, is that we have a lot of relationship dynamics that we're unsure about. We are definitely realizing because we're in Libra season where the scales of our relationship dynamics are out of whack and out of balance. And because we have the detective hat on, because we are being real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves, this is likely going to create a a little bit of a pop off, if you will, in our intuition, in our heart space, in our gut, where suddenly we realize what it is that we could do differently, what it is that we could try in order to resolve a lot of those relationship pop-offs. The moon is going to sextile Uranus shortly thereafter, Uranus being the great awakener, retrograde in that Taurus energy, and the moon, of course, still in a rulership and cancer energy. A sextile means that they're working together. Emotionally speaking, we are gaining a whole hell of a lot of clarity on where it is that, again, Uranus being retrograde in Taurus energy is trying to show us where it is that we're holding too tightly 
to people, places, and things that our old version of self had created, that our old version of self was very connected to, that we are afraid to let go of at this particular juncture because we don't fully trust that something better will be put in the place of the things that we're currently removing. Now, emotionally speaking, Uranus does kind of jolt our central nervous system. He does give us epiphanies, aha moments, pop-offs on what it is that we could do differently in order to get a different result, especially to provide us with more independence, more freedom from some of the relationship dynamics that we may be feeling trapped in. The moon is then going to trine beautiful interaction with Neptune, who was retrograde in Pisces energy. This is water on water action. We love water on water action because it helps to cleanse us and purify us and kind of bring our emotions into a little bit more clarity. And then it helps to kind of refresh us and rejuvenate our soul and our spirit and Essentially, this is going to download us with intuitive insight, intuitive vision on where it is that we need to be focusing our energies on wrapping certain cycles up, especially in realizing what it is that we've been overly attached to and afraid to let go of. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy as well. This is a little bit of a reality check, I'm going to call it. We recognize you know, once we receive this intuitive insight, what it is that we need to be doing. And of course, what we need to be doing is actively trying to wrap up situations and circumstances of the past. Saturn always brings a little bit of a serious type of somber mood and attitude to the forum. Of course, you know, Saturn being retrograde in this Pisces energy is trying to show us where it is that we have to boss up where we have to have more willpower and discipline in order to do the hard things that happen to be the right things that in order for us to actually move on, we have to cut the cord with the past. So emotionally speaking, there is this element where, again, we are realizing the not so nice thoughts and emotions that we've been sitting in, especially in realizing what it is that we have to do and what it is that we're not prepared to do. That is definitely putting us in a not so nice situation. And so emotionally speaking, we are starting to realize where it is that we do have to boss up, where it is that we do have to get a little bit more realistic with what we have power and control over, especially to bring certain chapters, certain cycles to a completion point. The moon in Cancer energy then going to directly oppose and sit across from Pluto, who is retrograde in Capricorn energy. Of course, Cancer energy, Capricorn energy, they sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel. They represent the axis of safety and security. Of course, the Cancer energy is very private, very connected to the home, very emotional in nature, while the Capricorn energy is our public life, our reputation, our financial wants, needs, and desires, and our goals and future ambitions. So this isn't going to feel good. An opposition never does. It kind of illuminates where it is that we're out of whack and out of balance, where it is that we need to bring into balance, where it is that, again, emotionally speaking, we're attached to the past. Pluto retrograde in this Capricorn energy is the final hurrah of us totally deconstructing and destroying the physical realm, the physical aspects that the old version of self has created. Emotionally speaking, in this cancer energy, even though we know that's what's best for us, even though we know we're going to have to eventually do it, we're going to avoid that like the plague. We are overly attached to the past. We are romanticizing the past. We're having too much nostalgia over the past situation and circumstances in order for us to do anything about it. So this is going to likely highlight for us where it is that there is a depth of darkness, where there is this, let's call it illumination of the power struggle going on within us, because part of us knows damn well that we have to let go and, sh and close the door and nail that sucker shut, while the other part of us is trying to convince us that we don't need to do any of that, that we just need to settle, that everything will be A-OK. -okay. It is at this particular point in time, 6.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that the moon will be shifting into that void of course. That void, again, is going to last until 6.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into the Leo energy at that time. 
9.19 p.m. We have the last thing popping off here today, which is the moon now in this Leo energy, sextiling, beautiful interaction with Mercury, who is now fresh in this Libra energy. So fire energy and air energy, this is the creative spark. This is a new insight with where it is that we're excited or inspired or motivated or determined to do what we need to do to boss up, to be bold and brave and courageous enough to not only unleash the emotions that we've been keeping to ourselves, not only express the part of ourselves that definitely want to come out into the open, but again, the moon being our heart space, Mercury being our headspace, they're trying to get along. They're trying to come up with creative solutions. They're trying to push us in the right direction. And if you find yourself in situations and circumstances, especially where relationship dynamics are concerned, there's going to be a heart to heart energy here. We're going to gain a clarity, not only on how it is that we feel, but where it is that we stand in other people's lives.